Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this time. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunities you give us in the new year. And we come here today as empty vessels. We ask you to fill us with your spirit during this worship service. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to do a couple of hymns this morning. Uh, one, uh, Epiphany is coming up on Friday, so um, I neglected to say today, uh, if Joe were here, he would say today is the first Sunday of 2023, and uh, it's the Sunday before Epiphany, and Epiphany is on Friday the 6th. So let's go to the Red Hymnal 254, We Three Kings, and we will sing all the verses, hymn number 254.
since this is the first Sunday of the new year, uh, we're going to go to hymn number 117 in the red hymnal, O God, our help in ages past. We will sing 1, 2, and 6 of this one. today. Uh, just some uh, starting next Sunday uh, we will go back to our normal schedule. We'll have uh, Bible study at 9.15 and then worship at uh, 10.30. The, uh, at 9.15 we're continuing the study we started uh, before Advent which is uh, called Perfect Blend. It's blending your everyday life in with your Christian life. Trying to you know, uh, do that. So it's, uh, it's Really good session that we've, sessions we've been doing, so please come and be part of that. Um, every Wednesday at 10 o'clock, are you picking back up this week, Elaine? Yeah. Okay, so this week at Elaine's house, uh, Wednesday at 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, and that's just a general guide, right? You, yeah. <laughs> Still there at 2 o'clock. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But uh, it's, it's a basic Bible study, and Elaine, if, you, if you're interested in that, contact Elaine or Marie. So, uh, first Sunday night singing will be second Sunday night this month, so we we'll probably need to put a sign. We'll probably put a sign to make sure everybody knows. But it's next week at 5 p.m., uh, so uh, if we got a theme for next week for food. Beans and greens and the trimmings. Beans, greens, and the trimmings. All right. So... So we'll do that. And the choir uh, will meet next Sunday at 4. So please come and be part of that at uh, 4 o'clock if uh, you're interested in being with the choir. And we'll begin our regular practices again on uh, January 15th, two weeks from today. Ladies' lunch is uh, Thursday, January 19th. Do we have a location at 11 o'clock? To be announced. To be announced, okay. All right, so it may be beans and greens also. <laughs> Maybe a theme thing. Do we have any other announcements, anything we need to know about? I do. I am working on a calendar to give everybody the first of the month instead of doing bulletins. We're going to see how that works. I'm working on it. Whoop, okay. trying my patience. But um, I also need three or four people this week. Um, kind of looking at Thursday to come down here and have us take down the tree and the biggest thing is wrapping each one of these ornaments and packing them up so not a lot to do but it um, does, would be nice to have two or three people down here to do it so if you want to see me after church and let me know if you can help then we can choose another day if we have to so just let me know and I think most of you got the word that Susan's memorial service will be January 21st 11 o'clock, or 1 o'clock, excuse me, at Crestwood. And there will we will be providing a meal for the family after that. So we'll be Here meeting. Here at the church. Yeah. And we will be meeting, and when Mary Jean gets back and get all that arranged and settled. So. All right. Any other announcements? Okay. Um, is there something? 
because I heard something. Uh, we are doing things a little differently this morning. I don't know if you noticed, Joe is not here today. Um, so um, he asked me a few weeks ago if I, if I would lead the service and, and bring the message today. I said, sure. So I had something prepared, and I was looking back over it on Friday night, and then I started getting all these text messages uh, when Susan passed away. And uh, I called him last night, and I told him, okay, I've got to change of plans. I, I, I put that that uh, piece that I put together into the into the file folder, I said, we'll use it next time I might need to, to use it. I said, today, uh, I want to give the congregation an opportunity to express yourself uh, to, you know, you can say anything about Susan. Uh, you can say anything about, you know, everybody's been through a lot this year, well, both good and bad, um, you know. You're, you're welcome to say anything, offer some encouragement, words of praise, have a prayer, whatever you would like to do. She was an integral part of our church, and mm -hmm. I love to hear her say Yeah, so save that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, but uh, when, we come, when it comes to that time, I'll, I'll bring the microphone around and let people, people in here can hear you, but it, uh, people going out on Facebook and, and all that will be able to, uh, be able to hear you too. So we'll do that and then I'll end uh, the service with uh, a little something for you as well. So uh, so that's what we're, we're planning to do. I want to go ahead and give you a heads up so I wouldn't hit you cold later and you could be thinking, okay, I want to, I want, this is what I want to say. So and it, you can say anything, you can say anything. You don't have to do just once. If you hear somebody say something, you want to respond to it and add add to it, you're welcome to do that as well. So, but we'll be doing that uh, in, at the sermon time today. Uh, in addition to Susan, do we have other prayer requests? But Susan Minton did pass away Friday evening, so. so. But we got other prayer requests? Okay, Sheila. Sheila, okay. Sheila, okay. Finally, get a pep, pep scheme. Mm -hmm. means okay. Somebody in prayer for she is having problems. Okay. Okay. We have others. Dine's running a little late. She should be here fairly soon. She's come down from Huntsville, so but she had sinus surgery on Wednesday and uh, did very well with it. She went back to work Thursday. So. <laughs> Remember traveling graces for Joe and Mary Jean as they come back this week, and uh, our daughter's coming back, will be coming back Tuesday from Florida. So, Diane's house sitting for her now. So. That's fine. Got others? All right, what about Joy's? What has God done for you this week? God's done nothing? Come on. He allowed me to wake up every that's, that's a joy. Jay's back is better. Okay, Jay's, Jay's back. He's okay. doing much better. I was going to add him here too as well. Make sure he calls Charles and lets him know about next week too. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, no, there's no doubt. He uh, will do that. Okay. <coughs> Today would have been my dad's 106th birthday. Oh, my. So. <laughs> Thank God for good health. Okay. It was good health. Huh? I just got for families. I just got for families. I was going to say, I have such a wonderful family. Mm -hmm. okay. Both immediate and church. Yeah. Okay. okay. We have any unspoken? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Uh, 
Sherry's going to play softly and we pray silently, then I'll pray and then we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. sister who had passed away, Miss Susan. And we have other people who are facing challenges at this time. Sheila, Wayne and Catherine, and Jay, and probably several of our unspoken. So, Lord, we just lift these people to you and ask you to touch each situation with your love and care and make us your instruments of that care. And Lord, we have the joy of beginning something new in this new year. And Lord, we just ask your blessings and your continued blessings on us. May we go into this community this week and take your life. Now join me as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the land is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Come the time where we affirm our faith, and if you need it, uh, you can go to page 881 in the Red Hymnal for the Apostles' Creed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith may we now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Ask our ushers to come forward. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have given us so much. You have blessed us great. May we take a portion of that now and return it to you for your service. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Okay, we'll come to the scary part. But as I said earlier, as a congregation, we've gone through so much this year, not only personal level uh, for many of us, but also as a congregation and, and uh, so many things have been happening. Uh, I was going to give you opportunity to, to say those, say any words you want to say or to pray or whatever you'd like to do. Um, who'd like to start? Elaine. So. I'm probably loud enough. <laughs> well, it's to pick up on. Anyway, one thing I remember, okay. One thing I remember about Susan, the first Sunday I came uh, this past year, she was sitting there and I sat next to her and we had a lot in common. We had a lot in common. And uh, one thing though I remembered about her, after the scripture was read, she said, thanks be to God. She always said that every Sunday. I heard her say that. And today I think it would be great after we read the scripture if we could all say that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like in honor of her because she always said it, thanks be to God. And I remember that about her. And uh, I grew to love her. You know, I didn't know her that long, but anyway, I sure did love her. And uh, I love the Lord, and I love all of you. And uh, I'm looking forward to serving the Lord in 2023. So uh, we always have a motto in our family, try to come up with a motto for the year. And uh, so this year I said, Jesus and me in 2023. Yes, yeah, thank you. you just pull the side. Uh, okay, she can send you, I think, over the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? I have something I'd like to read. Sure. I'm standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the moving breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch her at length until she hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and sky come to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there, she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight. That is all. She is just as large and massed, hull and spar as she was when she left my side. And she is just as able to bear her load of living freight to her destined port. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone says, there, she is gone. There are other eyes watching her coming and other voices ready to take up the glad shout. Here she comes. And that is dying. That's a poem by Henry Van Dyke. Thank you. We have others? Okay, Martha. Thank you. I've known Susan for many years. She went through some of my illnesses and always looked after me. She wanted to be sure that when we were in choir together, if everything was okay. And she looked after all of her friends and relatives. She was such a Jew, Jesus girl is what I call her. Because she was all their way there. Whenever you needed her, just call on Susan. God be with her. This is hard. The day before Susan's surgery, I went by our house to pick up the checkbook and all the financial stuff for the church. And she said, I will, you know, plan to be home in five days. And I'll be back to doing all the church stuff I need to do, you know, in just a few weeks. The one thing that, that really stands out in my mind is we hugged each other very tight. And we told each other, I love you. And I take from that, we should do that. Any chance we get, because we never know when it's going to be our last time to be able to do that. And that meant so much to me, and I just, I'm so thankful that we had that opportunity to do that for each other. Thank 
you want. For your motion for the. <laughs> I'm not a very good speaker. <laughs> but she uh, really meant a lot to me through her singing. And I'll never forget when she first came, she asked me if I could play this. And you know, my music ability of knowing a lot is not the greatest. But she asked me uh, to look at this song, which it, I had to work on it a lot. But I appreciated that very much, and I enjoyed her singing. Anybody else? Evan has a new alto. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? Miss Bonnie, can I put you on the spot and ask you to do a prayer for us? Sure. Okay. And then I'll do our scripture. And we'll our sweet, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you on the first day of this new year hoping to leave back all the bad things that happened last year. We've all had tragedy and sickness. We're looking forward to this new year, Lord, and what you can do for us individually and for our church as a whole. I pray, Lord, that our lives will be a light in this dark, dark world so that we can attract people and they will want to know, why do you feel that way? Why do you look like that? And dear Lord, dear Lord Jesus, when it does happen, give us the strength and the courage not to be afraid or scared of what's going to happen, but to be able to witness to that person. And Lord, I want to thank you for this little church. It has been a blessing to a lot of us. You can feel God here. It may be small in people, but dear Heavenly Father, you are here. You fill each space. The church feels like it's humongous because you are here. You're here looking after us. You are here to comfort us. And dear Lord Jesus, I can't walk without holding your hand. I stumble all the time. But Lord, I thank you for always being there for me. You're the one person we can all depend on. You never fail us. You never say, well, wait a minute. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you with everything in me. It just gives me little goose pimples to think that I'm just a little speck on this earth. But you, Almighty Lord, you love me. You died for me this insignificant little speck. Anybody that doubts love can't doubt that. Lord, I ask for your blessings on everyone here. On our church, may we spread, may we prosper in the faith of God. Size doesn't matter. But we thank you, Lord. Can't wait to see you and Susan and all them up there too. It will be what a day that will be when you come, dear Jesus. And I pray all these things in God's sweet name. And may God have the praise and the glory for all of his answered prayer. Amen. Thank you. Who needs a sermon after that? <laughs> so, so anybody else want to say anything? Good morning. I have to check on Dara. Y'all keep Dara in prayer. She gets, she's, I don't know, something might be bothering her. She don't feel well or whatever, but I'm going out. Okay. Okay. So, sure. All right.
Amen. Amen. Well, as I said, Friday night I was looking at what I was going to do today, and I, uh, I said, well, I can't ask others to say something about Susan or about anything without me adding something to it. And one thing that Susan always did, and it's true for the entire congregation, is that you're very encouraging. The whole congregation is. And so I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians, and get ready, Elaine. So, all right. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. And in it, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as you are doing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story, and then... Uh, then we're going to dismiss a little differently uh, today than we have been. Um, there are several legends that we've all grown up with. There's the legend of Robin Hood, Paul Bunyan, King Arthur. These are people who may have existed. Uh, in the case of Robin Hood, they think he may have been three people that they put together all these stories about. And some of the stories about them may or may not be true. It depends on uh, if it really happened. Uh, how many of you have heard the story of the legend of Johnny Lingo? There's a song about it. You know about it? Okay, you know about it. Yeah, there's a song about it. Okay. I actually, the um, Church of Latter-day Saints made a movie in 1969 about Johnny Lingo. So, uh, uh, it, it prob uh, not many people have heard, it, heard about Johnny Lingo. This was about the time... Uh, this was in the Polynesian Islands, about the time that the British Navy was introducing themselves uh, to the Polynesians, about uh, you know, uh, three, four hundred years ago, somewhere in there. But uh, let me give you a little background before I get into the story. It was custom at that time and in that place uh, that if uh, a young man wanted to marry a young woman, he had to provide a dowry to the father of the bride, which was usually a cow. He had to provide a cow. And that was the normal rate, was a cow. If she was something very special, he would provide two cows as the dowry. If she was something like Diane Calhoun in 1985, you could give three cows or more, you know. I, had, I would have had to walk those to Terry John, you know, so anyway. Judy grew up down where Diane did, so. So that's, that's what was going on. There, in, in that area, there was a man who had two daughters. And the youngest daughter was young, vivacious, and he said, I have, will have no trouble with her being married. She will be married fairly soon. But his oldest daughter, she was of a, a, he was worried about her. He, and privately, he thought to himself, uh, you know, I'll take no cows. <laughs> So, but there was a young man in that area named Johnny Lingo. Johnny was a trader. He would go from island to island taking things, and he was a trader. So uh, he came calling one time, not for the young, vivacious daughter, but for the older daughter. And he came calling for her. And eventually he proposed marriage. And when it came time for the wedding, the father or the bride was just overjoyed. He was saying, you know, this is the most generous man on the whole island. He may bring me two cows, three. You know, he, he let his imagination run away with him. Maybe he'll bring me five cows. And imagine his surprise when Johnny shows up with 10 cows. He offered 10 cows for this, this bride, who the father would have taken no cows for previously. Now, if you have a 10 cow bride, you can't just do a normal honeymoon. You have to do a honeymoon around the world. So that's what they did. And in those days, it usually took about a year to do it. So when Johnny and his bride came back, they recognized Johnny, but they did not recognize the bride because she was so beautiful and so graceful and so poised. The moment he paid 10 cows for her, she became a 10 cow bride. 
So that's what encouragement can do for us. Um, and you think about it. How many people do you think would give 10 cows for me or anybody? You know, do, and if they have, am I living up to that standard? But you think about also what Christ gave for us, which was very more costly than 10 cows. Am I living up to that standard of Christ's gift to me? So that's something we have to we have to think about, and something we have to struggle with every day. So, but as we go into this new year, we have to remember we're not alone. And I'm going to read from Isaiah here. It's Isaiah 43:2. It says, "When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you pass through the fire, you will not be burned." The flames will not set you ablaze. Now, whether that's literal or metaphorical in the way that uh, it, it was intended, it doesn't matter. God will be with us through the Holy Spirit in all of our journeys, through the good times, through the challenges we have, and what we have to do is lean on each other in that in that time. So. That's what I had to offer for you today. I'm glad for all of you for being willing to participate today. And uh, uh, I'm going to close today with something that's a little different. We're not going to close with a closing hymn. What I want you to do is for us all to get together and form some geometric shape. It doesn't have to be a circle. but and let's hold hands and as we end today let's look at each other and love each other and accept each other so I'm going to ask you now if you would just in our best way possible make a make a geometric shape of some sort here as we hold hands Sherry says we failed geometry. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say Elaine's a math teacher here. And what, what is this called? So, uh, uh, okay, right. So, okay, okay. I invite you this week, as you encounter each other, as you encounter people who are, uh, you know, in stores or wherever you encounter people, uh, look at them and say, "I'd give ten cows for you." <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Think about the response you would get. You know, you know, you know, I, you know and think about who would throw your bail for the, for the, in that time. But at least take somebody who you don't know and in your encounter, and in some way let them know they're loved, and let each other know you're loved as well. And that's one reason I wanted us to end like this, so we're all looking at each other and, and feeling the family that we are. Because we uh, never know when it'll be the last. All right. All right. So I'm going to dismiss us with, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 I love everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we love you too. So do I. I do. <laughs> good job. Good service. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.